And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Hey, Master Sergeant Floyd here. Welcome to Case in Point for July 27th, 2022. Case in Point's mission in life is threefold. First, leadership development. Second, helping others succeed. And third, providing you with actionable information that you can use in the short term, even right now, to help you. That's it. That's what we're here to do. So why do we call it Case in Point? Because all the advice and all the lessons, all the experience that I impart to you through this program is based on my own experience, my own cases in point. So I'm going to give you examples of, of what I've done, how I've done it, where I've been, what I've seen, uh, so that you can do it too, and more importantly, that you can pass that along to others. And, and I have had great success in the military. I'd say extraordinary success. I wouldn't say unprecedented because there's probably some people who have done the same thing, but certainly in my experience it's extraordinary, and I'll get into that in a minute. I'll, I'll, lay, what, I'll lay out what that looks like, but none of that really matters. None of my success, uh, my experience, my promotions, achievements, awards, none of that matters if, I, if I'm not willing to take the time to pass that along to other people and help them out as they come up. And that's what leadership is all about, is helping other people. Um, so once you've reached a certain level of achievement, whether you call that rank or income or experience or skill level, uh, then as a leader, it's up to you to pass that on. And that requires a great deal of one thing, discretionary effort. And we'll talk a lot about discretionary effort through the whole series on these videos because that's what drives everything. Uh, that's what being a leader is all about. A couple of housekeeping things. First, uh, if you find this program helpful and you like what we do here, you like the information that I'm putting out, uh, share it with others. Give it a thumbs up. Please like it and share it. And consider subscribing to the channel because I guarantee you that this information will help you. Now, this, these video series is geared toward military people. Uh, I'm in the National Guard, and uh, so it's, it's mainly aimed at military, but I think civilians can find some value in this too. And second, uh, give me your feedback. You can leave a comment on the videos themselves, or you can email me directly at floyd at williamafloyd.com, floyd at williamafloyd.com, and I'll read your comments and I'll answer your questions on, uh, on episodes of this program. So I talk a lot about success. I use the word success. I use the word succeed. So what do I mean by that? Uh, I define success this way. First, helping the most people possible. And second, if you look at it, if you look at success through your own lens, whether you're looking at success through your own rank progression or skill level or achievements that you gather, uh, just keep in mind that the higher you go in rank and, and the larger your sphere of influence becomes, the larger your platform becomes to be able to help more people. So they, these two things drive each other. Um, so case in point, this program and, and me, we're in the business of training and development, leadership development. And when you're thinking about that, on a daily basis, when, you're, when your mind is geared toward that, you start seeing those opportunities everywhere in your everyday life. It's like when you buy a new car and you start seeing that car all over the road. Well, when you're in the, the headspace of leadership development, you see those chances uh, to pass that along in your everyday life. And here's a good example. So today is July 27th. One week ago was July 20th which is the anniversary of the moon landing, which happened in 1969. So it was July 20th, 1969, the United States first landed man on the moon. Just a monumental achievement for the country and for mankind. A one giant leap for mankind. So it was a, it was a huge deal. Uh, 
Now, at the same time that that was happening, the Vietnam War was raging and protests all over the country, which is very negative. So you've got the very positive achievement of the moon landing and the negative things happening with Vietnam and other things around the country. Okay, well, that's a great history lesson, Floyd, but you said you were going to give me actionable information that I can use in the short term. So where is that? I'll tell you. How can you use that, the moon landing, to help your situation? Well, here it is. Give a class. Give a class on leadership development. So now you're thinking, how does the moon landing help me give a class on leadership development? Well, easy. Leadership development uh, is all about a leader okay, who articulates a vision so that others are motivated to action to accomplish a goal. That ties directly to leadership development. Uh, that's what President Kennedy did in 1961. Uh, President Kennedy laid out his vision for going to the moon. Go. First, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space for one purpose which this nation will never overlook, the survival of the man who first makes this daring flight. But in a very real sense, it will not be one man going to the moon. If we make this judgment affirmatively, it will be an entire nation, for all of us must work to put him there. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. And if you want Army doctrine to back up this class that you're going to give on leadership development, uh, here it is. Put it up. FM 6-22, 6-13, quote, leaders set goals and establish a vision, motivate or influence others to pursue the goals, unquote. And ADP 6-22-1016, quote, the ability to provide clear vision is vital to the strategic leader. The strategic leader's vision provides the ultimate sense of purpose, direction, and motivation, unquote. And the last part of that sentence is taken directly from the Army definition of the word leadership. So there's your class. There's your class on leadership development. You can use the moon example if you want, or... Uh, you can use an example if, if you've worked under a leader who's been able to convey a vision to other people and inspire them to do things. Use that too. Do that at your next drill or the next chance you get. I guarantee if you go to your person in charge, NCOIC leader person, and offer to teach a class on leadership development and explain to them what you're going to do, first, you're going to inspire a lot of people by doing that. It's not going to be expected, and you're going to help a lot of people. You're going to give them some information that they didn't know. And second, it's going to look good on you. It's going to reflect good on you. It's going to give you confidence to teach more classes. It's going to make you feel better about yourself. So, uh, you want another one? Okay, so uh, last week I ran across an article. Uh, so the the military services as a whole across the board are having a very hard time recruiting people, having a very hard time filling their recruitment quotas. And I came across this article uh, last week. Go ahead and put it up. Uh, quote, there are just lower levels of trust with the U.S. government and the military. Unquote. That's from Major General Edward Thomas Jr., who is the commander of the Air Force Recruiting Service, New York Times, July 14th of this year. So there's another class, stewardship of the uniform, being a good steward of the uniform and the service. Now, 
there's other reasons why recruiters are having trouble getting people in the service. It could be criminal records, it could be physical fitness or mental fitness, but on an individual basis, that's not anything that you can do anything about. But what you can do is be a good steward of the uniform that you have on, and that will directly reflect on the public's perception of what we do. That falls directly under leadership. It falls under esprit de corps. It falls under morale. Wear and appearance of the uniform, AR 670-1. Boom. There's your class. That's another class that you can teach. There's, these examples are all around us every day. But you know, when you're tuned in, you start seeing it everywhere and it becomes easier to recognize these things. But all that takes, guess what? Discretionary effort. Now, discretionary effort uh, is basically defined as effort that you're capable of that goes beyond the bare minimum requirements. And in the National Guard, let's face it, um, there's very little required of you to stay in the Guard. If we look at uh, pass height and weight, pass your PT test, shoot minimum at the range, and show up to drill, and you can stay in the Guard. You can stay in the service. That's the bare minimum. Everything else you do above that is discretionary effort. That's your choice. All right. So, who am I and why should you listen to me? Well, briefly, here's a, a rundown of my military career. Put it up. So 1986 to 1989, I was active duty, 24th Infantry Division. Uh, got out in 89, had an 18 year break in service. 2007 joined the Army National Guard to deploy to Iraq. That was the reason why I joined in 2007. I did that. Uh, 2008, promoted from E3 PFC to E4. 2010, promoted to E5. 2012 to E6. 2014, promoted to E7. And then in 2018, promoted to E8 and accepted my first sergeant position. And now currently sitting as a master sergeant. That is, the key takeaway here is E3 private first class to first sergeant in 10 years. There's one reason why that happened. And it wasn't because I was the fastest, the strongest, got the highest test scores, shot the best at the range. It was a ton of discretionary effort. Now let me uh, give one more note on, on giving a class before I move on. Whatever it is that you choose to give a class on, you know, leadership development, the moon landing, this article on the New York Times, whatever subject you choose to give a class on, you could even use the five paragraph operations order to help you plan that class. Get familiar with that. You can, anything, anything that you teach, you can use the operations order format to help you organize that training. And that's another class that you could teach how to use the operations order to plan training. Now, that would, what I'm saying with Army Doctrine is such a huge umbrella that there's, there's no shortage of finding topics that would fall under and be supported by Army Doctrine. Okay, so let me move on from where I was. So, discretionary effort is your choice. Now, at case in point, pardon the pun, these videos, as a case in point, are 100% discretionary effort. There is no expectation for me to do these. There is no requirement. There is no reward. There is no promotion. There is no money. And there will probably be no recognition on the part of my leadership on it either. This is just me putting stuff out so that you can take my lessons, my experience, and my success to improve your own situation if you choose. That would be your own discretionary effort, whether or not you use this information um, to help yourself out or to help others out. And we'll talk a lot more about discretionary effort in future episodes because it derives everything that we're about. Discretionary effort. So it's been 
three years since I put out a video. I think the first video I put out was in 2016. And the last one that I did was uh, almost three and a half years ago. So I've been out of it for a while and there's a reason for that. And it's not a good reason. And I'll get into that in a future episode because I believe in being transparent with you. And that's, uh, that's, that's a big event that happened. And I'll get into that. Uh, but I'll be straight with you about it. And I'll tell you about it uh, just in a future episode. But for now, let's, let's wrap this one up. Um, my goal here is to provide you with a quality product. Okay, that means a quality video that's worth watching that gives you value. And I think I've done that just even today with uh, the idea of giving you classes, giving you class ideas, be on the lookout for those and how you can teach, what, teach one of those. Um, and it, well, so this is, these videos are a product and it may take a while to iron out the kinks and get the, the look and then the timing, uh, the format of the video just right, but we're working on that. We'll continue to work on it to make it better. And I will read your comments and answer your questions starting with the next episode of Case in Point. Again, you can write to me directly, Willie, or Floyd at WilliamAFloyd.com, Floyd at WilliamAFloyd.com, or you can find us on our YouTube channel. All the videos that I've done previously and this one will be on the YouTube channel. So I really do hope that you get some value out of these videos. I do it for you. That's the reason. I hope you believe it because it's true. I do appreciate you watching this one and we'll see you next time.